Hi, I'm Todd Nock. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Now we're up to part three of this three-part watercolor illustration of Jubilee from the X-Men. So this video is a little bit longer because not, I not only watercolor Jubilee herself, but also do a background wash. So it's a little bit longer video than the, the previous uh, two, the pencil and ink stage videos, but I wanted to make sure you got to see the entire process. So uh, let's get right to the watercolors. All right, so here we go. This is the watercolor stage. So I'm going to start mixing up the colors now. Um, I'm using a Winsor Newton Cotman Travel watercolor set. Uh, the type of brush I'm using is a Niji uh, watercolor brush. Uh, you can fill the uh, body of the brush pen with the uh, with water, and then you can as you squeeze it, water comes out the the through the brush uh, itself. Um, very convenient. And I'm also working on the Canson 9x12 140 pound cold press watercolor artboard. So as I paint here, I'll share some of my tips and tricks and approaches to my watercolor technique, as well as answer some of the questions you've posted on my social media, Twitter here on YouTube or uh, Instagram or on uh, my Art of Todd Knock uh, fan page on Facebook. And all the links to my social media are listed below in the info of this video. So if you want to follow me on any of those, those uh, social media that you might also be on, there's a direct link there for your convenience. So as you saw at the beginning of this uh, watercolor video, I, I started making, mixing up the specific flesh tone that I would use for Jubilee. And uh, the colors I was using, I've used to create this, this specific flesh tone is, uh, I've used some uh, red, yellow, a little bit of white, and I like to use a lot of water when I'm creating a, a skin tone for a character, uh, just so that it comes in uh, a bit lighter and I can always uh, uh, add, add darker shades uh, if I need to. And if it's a darker skinned character, uh, then I, I might incorporate some, some brown and maybe even a little blue in, in, in my, uh, my flesh tone um, palette that, uh, that I'm mixing up. But uh, right now we're working here with with Jubilee and this is the color I've worked in here. Adding a little bit of brown here and a little bit of blue just to create a sh uh, the shadow tone. Uh, so uh, I want to keep it along the same type of uh, skin tone I've created for, for Jubilee, but I want I want uh, a bit of a, 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 a gray, grayish brown effect for, for the shadows uh, for, um, for her skin. And a lot of the placement of the shadows here are uh, <laughs> contingent on her, her power. Uh, Jubilee's power set, if you're not familiar with Jubilee, is that she can create these plasma-like fireworks uh, from, her, from her hands. And so since I uh, have drawn in fireworks, and that will be a part of it. Now, they're not a huge light source, but it's enough that it's keeping me mindful where I'm placing the shadows. So they're on the, the bottom sides there of her legs, as well as uh, her arm. And um, so we've got, we got light kind of coming from all over the place with uh, the fireworks uh, spraying off in, in different directions. So uh, just kind of a bit of a general uh, light lighting placement. It's not a heavy lighting because I've not created a specific environment for her to be in that would, you know, where she's in either in like the danger room or fighting sentinels in the war-torn streets of wherever they're at, of Genosha, let's say Genosha. So um, it's, this is more of a bit of a, of a character study type piece. So, so the, the shadows are not directly contingent on the, the, the light source coming from the, the fireworks, but, um, but it is something I'm kind of slightly keeping in mind, um, as well as the, uh, a major light source coming from above and a bit to the right. So I've incorporated some red into the skin tone uh, to make a bit of a pink shade here that I'm putting in uh, Jubilee's cheeks, her nose, um, as well as I'll be dropping some here into her knees just to kind of give it a bit of a more of a youthful, rosy, rosy look for, for Jubilee. So let's take a look at uh, one of the questions y'all have submitted. So M. Coover here on YouTube asks, what age did you get into art, and how did you start getting recognized? Uh, I 
always had a passion for drawing at a very, very young age. Earliest memories were of drawing. But I did get into uh, comic books, collecting comic books at age 13, and uh, at age 14 started trying to make my own homemade comic books, you know, drawing something up and, ha and then printing it out on, on, uh, the, on, a, on a Xerox machine, uh, you know, a copy machine, and uh, distributing my comics at school, my little homemade comics. So that's what got me into it. Uh, what, when I started, I started getting recognized when I started going to comic book conventions, showing my portfolio, uh, getting critiques from editors, and just slowly working my way through that. Now, when I tried to break in, the internet wasn't around yet. At least it wasn't made public yet. So, um, so I, the only way I could actually interact with uh, editors or meet professionals was to go to comic book conventions. So I'd go to the Dallas comic book conventions every, every four months that they had there and would meet with uh, any professional I could get to talk to uh, to look at my work. So um, I continued making many comics I, in, through art school, but they started to look a bit better, and those were uh, what I got discovered on. I, uh, a buddy of mine took, a classmate of mine took those to a convention, showed them to a guy who worked for Rob Liefeld, creator of uh, Deadpool and uh, Cable, and uh, he liked them, took them back, showed them to Rob. He liked them. Two or three days later, I get a phone call from Rob and said, I want you to come work for my Image Comic Studio, Extreme Studios. So, and that was in the mid-90s when that happened. So that's kind of how I got recognized. So best thing to do is keep cre creating your art because you never know who's going to see it. And thanks to the internet now, you can post it on your Instagram, your Facebook fan page, your, your Tumblr account, your Twitter account, and you never know who might see it and who might say, hey, I want to hire this person to, to draw for me. So as you can see, while I was answering that question, I have worked on uh, Ghibli's jacket, now working on, on her, her shirt here. So uh, same as with the skin tone, I, I did uh, the base yellow of the jacket, then added some uh, you know, grays or blues to, to that yellow to create a shadow uh, for, for the, the, the different parts, of, you know, the folds and, of her jacket. Same uh, technique I'm using here for her shirt, a base shade of pink, and then I'll uh, add some either some blue or, or browns here from this travel set to create a bit of a shadowy uh, shade of that same pink to create the shadows uh, for um, her her top here. And right now I'm coming in with a, uh, a little bit, uh, I, I didn't like how light the pink was. I wanted it a bit more vibrant, a little bit more of that late 80s, early 90s sort of neon hyper color sort of kind of shade so uh adding just a bit more more red to to it so it's a, a bit more of a vibrant shade um uh, which is nice uh working light and then going darker so that you can you can always layer in more color to uh, get the vibrancy that you might want all right let's take another question this time from the art of todd Knock facebook page ryan o has asked if someone told you before you started how much work it would take to get to where you are would you have done it anyway that's a really interesting question, Ryan. Uh, I would say I think I would. I think I would still do it anyway because I have a passion for drawing, passion for creating, passion for superheroes, passion for telling stories. I think it's that passion that makes uh, part of what I do so much fun. It's because I love to do it so much. I want to do it despite how much work it takes. I mean, anything really is going to take work uh, if you really want to do it. I mean, whether it's play sports, you know, whatever you train yourself for, if you're writing, uh, if you play an instrument, if you sing, if you act, if you do science, if you, if you, uh, you know, are a chef and, and you want to cook something, you know, does, that's awesome. It's going to take work if you want to master it. And so, uh, anything that doesn't require work is probably so easy really anybody could do it. So, um, I mean, like when we play a video game, it's if you get you want to get really good at it, you work to master each level to beat each boss. You've got to, you've, you, you know, you, you but, but you're having fun and doing it, you don't really think about how much work you're putting into it necessarily. You might have challenging times that are frustrating, but you, you keep pushing through it because you enjoy it so much. So I'd say, no, I didn't let the, the how much work it, it, it has taken to, uh, get into comics and to continue to work in comics, I wouldn't have let that stop me. Another question here from the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page from Jason G, uh, which is kind of appropriate, his question's appropriate to what I'm working on here. Which five X-Men characters would you like to draw on a routine basis in a monthly book and why? Uh, my five of my favorite X-Men are, uh, and I like a lot of different X-Men, but my, some of my favorite five are um, 
uh, Kitty Pride, Rogue, Nightcrawler, Colossus, and Iceman. So that would be a fun five five member team if I were to pick like my top five faves. Uh, that would probably be my team there. But I mean, there's so many other characters that I like as well. You know, if we reach into the New Mutants and X Factor and Excalibur, so um, those would be my those that would be my five five member team right now. And why? Because they're my favorites, because I like them so much. You know, actually, the X-Men Gold series is a series I'm really excited about because it features pretty much the, the X-Men lineup that was the first lineup that I read, uh, the 1985 lineup. Um, we're just missing Rogue and Cyclops, but otherwise all the members of X-Men Gold were all together back when, when I first uh, read, read the X-Men around uh, issue 193, up through 200 around there. So uh, so I think that's really cool and uh, that would be a really fun fun book to work on. So as you see in here, I've uh, continued the same process with uh, the blue of her costume, whether it be the gloves, the shorts, the boots, it's all it's all pretty similar here. Uh, so let's, uh, let's look into another question here. Uh, this time uh, over on Instagram, Connor Tierney 57 asks, do you use references for muscles at all? Uh, yes, yes, Connor Tierney 57, I do. Uh, I like to study real life whenever possible uh, just to uh, help maintain that believability. Even though it, we work in, in, in comics, it's an, uh, many of our styles are an exaggeration of the human form. Uh, studying real, real life helps maintain a bit of believability amidst that exaggeration. Uh, I like to study the... the you know, muscle groupings and, and how the muscles move uh, for a specific pose, especially if I'm drawing a fighting pose or a, an action pose, or if, even if a person is sitting or standing or walking. I like to look at real life reference to see, am I achieving a believability there? So uh, so I will will catalog uh, all sorts of, of imagery for, for karate, for, um, you know, uh, Karate fights, stances, that, that's great for fight scenes because the muscles are going to pull and stretch in different ways. So definitely utilizing reference for, for drawing muscles is, is uh, very helpful and beneficial, especially, especially if you're looking to uh, achieve a bit of believability amidst your exaggeration. Okay, just a few touches there. Next up, what I want to do is uh, Jubilee's hair. So I'm taking the blue with some brown and creating kind of a a shade of bluish gray. You know how superheroes who have black hair have this kind of bluish gray uh, to, uh, color kind of highlight to their hair? That's what I'm looking to create here. So uh, mix, mixing these different colors uh, kind of helps create that, that look. Do a little test on my, uh, my board there to make sure I'm, I'm getting the right shade of uh, bluish gray that I want. Adding a little bit more water uh, to kind of thin it out just a bit. And uh, again, having a, a scratch sheet to test your colors on is really beneficial. It keeps you from uh, making maybe a mistake on the artwork itself. So test your colors before you commit to it. So uh, then I come in and with a brush add the wisps of, of bluish gray, leaving a little bit of a white uh, through the hair there for uh, a highlight from the, the, the light above um, uh, shining on, on her hair. Uh, gives it a nice, uh, nice little detail effect there just by leaving the white of the artboard there. All right, then taking some extra brown here. Uh, what I want to do is uh, keep it a little bit away from the blue there, but uh, get just enough brown to color the iris of her eyes, her brown eyes. So, so Jubilee is starting to take shape here. I pretty much have uh, handled uh, just a little darker brown there, just for up under the eyelid, create a little depth little shape to her eye there. And uh, Jubilee is pretty much taken care of here. So now coming up next, I don't know what happened to the video, but I seem to have lost the video where I, I color the, um, the plasma firework bursts. Uh, I'm gonna drop a little red here on her X. But for some reason, I, I, I lost the bit of video where we see her, where you see me, uh, watercolor in the different colors for her plasma. So we kind of just jump right to already being done. I apologize for that. Uh, but essentially I'm just, I just dropped in different shades of blue, green, yellow, yellow, orange, red uh, in there to, to give that, uh, that firework effect. 
So what I'm doing now is prepping the board for a background wash. So I am just putting in just water. I'm just, I'm just getting uh, water on the board, just wetting the board uh, in preps uh, for, for the, the uh, background wash. Um, this is called wet paint on wet board or a wet on wet wash. Um, as opposed to doing the wet paint on the dry board, which is how I colored Jubilee. When you put the water on the board and then start adding the the, the color, the different shades. I'm, I think I'm doing mostly going to do mostly orange for this, but it it, it lets the uh, paint pool in different ways, kind of blend and blur uh, in different ways. And when if you put another color in there amidst uh, that 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 shape of uh, color that you've dropped in, they'll start to mingle and merge and, and, and uh, really, really create some cool effects. Now this is a part of the stage where I believe you can't really over control it. Yeah, I was, I'm going with orange and yellows. I'm gonna drop some yellows in here. So this is a, a, a place where you, you can't really control it too much, otherwise it's gonna turn into a mess. You kinda have, to, this is a time to let the paint do what it wants, let the paint and the water mix and merge as they want and uh, try not to over control it too much and just let the background become what it is. It can create a really cool looking effect, really cool shapes and, and patterns and textures, uh, but it takes a lot of practice and I'm still practicing how to not overthink or overwork um, my watercolors or my, my background washes. You can come in with a little uh, bit of uh, paper towel and kind of dab in certain places, um, uh, so I, I'm coming in, look at here, with a little bit of a dark purple here to create some uh, uh, more, more shape and shadow behind uh, Jubilee. And I'm just dropping it in different spots uh, and, and letting the water of, that's been on the board along with the wetness of the, of the uh, paint uh, merge. And you can tilt the board here. I like doing the, the board tilt because then the, the paint, whether it be the orange, the yellow, the purple, they'll start to blend together. I can kind of direct the, 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 the paint to, to, uh, to fade in from one color to the next. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a fun trick and it, it does kind of create some really fun patterns and uh, cool effects for the background. So uh, you can, depending on how much water is on the board, uh, depends on how fast or slow that, that paint is going to, uh, to flow, uh, depending on the angle that you hold the board at. The, the higher the angle, the faster that paint could could roll across. Uh, but I like how, how it just really starts to blend those those three different colors together to create uh, really cool gradations. So uh, now that I've kind of got my background wash in, next thing I, I wanna do here is uh, start creating some, uh, some of the colors that I used for the fireworks. I want to do kind of a splatter effect. So I'm just loading up the brush with uh, paint and color and then tapping the, the, the brush pan against my finger uh, and, the, and so then the paint just kind of splatters there onto the artboard. So I'm just kind of focusing on the spots around her hand and I'm kind of letting the paint go wherever it wants and uh, it kind of brings a little more chaos and, and uh, life to the, the, the firework effect. Um, it's it's more organic than trying to draw in just uh, the 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 fireworks themselves. Just letting uh, the, those flecks of paint, different colors, pinks, uh, blues, greens, oranges, uh, just kind of flecking those in there um, to get uh, even more wild um, uh, fireworks sort of pattern. So as I fleck in more color onto the uh, artboard here, let's uh, tackle another question. Uh, again, from the Art of Todd Knock Facebook page, Brittany W. asks, do you have any tattoos? If so, what are they? And if not, what would you get if you ever decide to get one? Uh, interesting question, Brittany. It's uh, pretty unique there. Um, I do not have any tattoos. I can definitely say that. I do not have a single tattoo, though I do appreciate what can be done with tattoos. I've seen some amazing tattoo work. It's, it's incredible what, what people can do uh, with tattoo artistry. Uh, if I ever decide to get one, what would I get? You know, that's really interesting. I don't know, I don't know what I would get. It's probably why I don't have a tattoo. I, uh, I, I don't know what I would get. Uh, probably, I'd probably get my wife's name if I were to commit to something. Something uh, like that, I probably would go with with something that involves my wife. 
because she's my favorite. But um, no matter what fandom I'm into, I'm, I'm a big, big fan of my wife. So uh, that, that, but no plans on getting a tattoo. I, 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 that would just be if I were to ever get one, but I don't, don't have any plans to do that. But thank you for the really unique question. And thanks for y'all posting questions here on, on uh, my social media, especially here on my YouTube page. I appreciate y'all taking the time to comment, to post questions. I do my best to, to respond whenever I can. Uh, so thanks for your patience and uh, thanks for being such great supporters of my channel and of my art. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to subscribe to my channel so you can tune into future for future art videos. Uh, thanks for your patience as I uh, try to get content together. And um, so I want to say thank you for all your support. You guys are and gals are awesome, incredible, and I, and I appreciate you all. So uh, let's see. As we're moving towards the end here of this uh, video, I got, I'm got i adding a little white gel pen. I'm using the Uniball Signo white gel pen to put some little highlights on, on the, 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 the uh, firework plasma bursts just to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of white light on there so um, so little highlights just flicking them in there and uh, dropping them in the different little spots um, so uh, that's the kind of a little bit of a finishing touch here uh, utilizing the uniball signo white gel pen I know a lot of people ask what white gel pen I use uniball signo that's been my favorite one um, of late so as I'm wrapping up this illustration, I want to say thanks again. I'm so glad I've got another chance to get a, a three-part video up. I know a lot of my posts have been, uh, uh, here, a lot of the videos I've been posting have been my uh, art broadcasts, and I haven't been able to do many of these three-parters. So glad to finally get this Jubilee one off my phone and up onto YouTube for y'all to see. I have more three-parters that I hope to do, or multi-parters that I hope to do. Uh, it's just finding the time amidst my work to do that, as well as convention travel. So thanks again for all of y'all's support. Hope y'all are having a great time. Keep on drawing. Keep having fun. And I'll see y'all again real soon in the near future. All the best, everybody. Bye-bye.